After six grueling months of war, USS Enterprise had proven her steel at the Battle of Midway. But the Big E is about to face her greatest challenge yet, invasion at a place called Guadalcanal. The Solomon Islands lie in the center of shipping lanes in the Pacific, just 1,200 miles off the coast of Australia. Whoever controls the Solomons controls the war. And the Japanese Navy has made the island of Guadalcanal the center square in the chessboard of the Pacific. August 7th, 1942, the savage battle begins. Enterprise launches its air groups and bombards Guadalcanal. They first disable the enemy airstrip. The Japanese base is not prepared for an invasion. Minutes later, U.S. Marines storm ashore. By the next morning, the Marines have captured the Japanese airfield and renamed it Henderson Field. The initial invasion of Guadalcanal is a resounding success. The confident Navy brass sends Enterprise out to sea and away from the action, leaving only a token fleet to support the mopping up operations. But the victory celebration is premature, and the decision to send Enterprise to sea is fateful. The enemy ships steam down the New Georgia Sound, headed directly for the American fleet anchored off Guadalcanal. In just 32 minutes, the enemy sinks four heavy cruisers and badly damages a cruiser and a destroyer. What remains of the American fleet escapes out to sea. The Japanese send a massive carrier task force, their plan destroy Enterprise and the other American carriers and wipe out the Marines on the island. That was the day we got our baptism of fire. August 24th, 1942, near the island of Guadalcanal, USS Enterprise is assaulted by combined aerial attacks. At 4.44 p.m., a dive bomber makes a direct hit on the Big E's deck. 30 seconds later, with another direct hit, her damaged control crews leap into action. A third bomb nails Enterprise. The blast punches a 10-foot hole in the flight deck. USS Enterprise is aflame and out of the fight. She returns to Pearl Harbor for repairs, and the enemy will seize this opportunity. Friday the 13th. The Japanese force has reached Guadalcanal. The two sides pound each other from close range. From the island, U.S. Marines watch the epic battle unfold. It goes on for hours. Dawn reveals the scene of an apocalypse. It is one of the darkest periods in the history of the U.S. Navy. But hope is just over the horizon. USS Enterprise is out of the repair docks and steaming into the fight. The first planes will head for Henderson Field and take out any Japanese ships or planes they encounter en route. Daybreak, November 15th, 1942. From the war-ravaged airstrip at Henderson Field, Bruce McGraw and his comrades from USS Enterprise head off in search of four surviving enemy transports. The four Japanese transports are busy unloading supplies and reinforcements. The Wildcats strafe the transports and beaches with heavy 50 caliber machine guns. One by one, the four transports and their cargoes of troops and supplies are sent up in flames and torn by machine gun fire. After more than three months of horrific combat, U.S. forces have finally tipped the scales in Guadalcanal. Henderson Field belongs to the Marines for good. We all were very happy, very, very happy. It was a long, long battle. We lost quite a few men. A lot of my friends there got hurt. For the Japanese, defeat in the November clash destroys any hope for victory at Guadalcanal. Throughout the winter, American forces will continue to eliminate the last of the enemy troops still dug in on the island. USS Enterprise had proven her steel at the Battle of Midway. But the Big E is about to face her greatest challenge yet, invasion at a place called Guadalcanal.